Welcome to On the Record. I'm TJ Mays in for Jim Forsyth. Joint Base San Antonio Lackland is one of several bases in the country currently hosting evacuees from China who are being quarantined as a precaution against the coronavirus. Today, it was officially announced that one of the evacuees has contracted coronavirus. Jennifer McQuiston, Deputy Director with the CDC, joins us. Dr. McQuiston, now that we know that the virus has been confirmed, what is the risk to the general public in San Antonio? The risk to the general public here remains the same as before we had a confirmed case. Um, it is very low. The risk to Americans to contract this virus is still highest for those who travel to mainland China, where the virus is spreading very quickly. There's no active virus spreading in the community here in San Antonio. That's reassuring. Um, when did this, this confirmed case, when did this patient start uh, showing symptoms? This patient started showing symptoms on February 11th. That morning we noticed on temperature check that they had a fever and that was enough to trigger us sending them to the hospital by EMS and getting them into a special isolation room so that they could get the care they needed and we could get tests sent off to the CDC. Is there a specialized process for transport and hospitalization and kind of what does that look like? So there is a specially contracted um, ambulance that's being used just for this response. It's not being used for the general public. And they've got it um, carefully um, managed inside to minimize the risk of any infectious disease exposure there. And the EMS staff have been trained in how to do it. As a matter of fact, we had an exercise on how to do this the day before this patient presented with the fever. So we felt that we were ready and it went very smoothly. Well, that's good to know. Um, so in terms of the other folks that are being quarantined, there are about 90 others, I believe. Uh, does this increase their risk for contracting the virus? So the main risk for coronavirus for the remaining 90 passengers continues to be possible exposure that they may have had back in China. So when we have a 14-day quarantine period for them, we're still tracking that based on their exposure to China. Um, we're going to do a very thorough investigation of this patient to see where they may have gone when they were inside the quarantine area, who they may have had contact with. If we identify anyone who had a high risk exposure, meaning they were living in the same room with them or they had a prolonged caretaking type of contact with them, they would be considered high risk and we would have special measures for them. But this person was a solo traveler, did not have anyone living with them, and so we think that the risk to the remaining passengers is very low. I see. So is that a standard operating procedure for, for quarantines generally? I mean, I know you try to keep families together. So if uh, you said this is a, a single passenger, if, if it was a, a family, would you quarantine the entire family? Do you quarantine the individual? How does that work? Well, I think that we would see what the results of that investigation showed, how many people were you know, physically taking care of the patient when they had symptoms. Um, right now, I haven't gotten any information to suggest that we would extend the quarantine period. But of course, it would depend on what we found out during the investigation. So just to clarify, those other 90 folks, they don't have a shot clock that starts over again. They're not, still... Not at this time. Okay, so they'll be there for another several days. And... We are tracking uh, February 20th as the date that they'll be released from quarantine. Okay, so there are people here in, in San Antonio who are concerned about this and are wondering whether there will be additional evacuees brought in once this quarantine is over. Is that something that we should be thinking about? You know, I think we have to acknowledge that there are more Americans in China that might need to be evacuated, but right now I haven't received any information from the State Department that suggests that any are pending. I will say that JBSA Lackland was wonderfully supportive and they, they were prepared to receive up to 250 passengers, so they haven't reached the capacity of what they were prepared for. So in the event that there is an evacuation, I guess we'll see if any of them come here. So I know that there's been some concern voiced about the military personnel on base. Um, there's been some question as to why, uh, why it, quarantine these folks at a, a military base where our armed forces are stationed. Can you walk us through that rationale? So the decisions for um, how how they were going to do quarantine and maybe which sites might be appropriate were made at fairly high levels in government and I'm not aware of all the details but I think it had to do with which bases had the type of housing that can ensure um, passengers remained isolated so that they could be completely separated from the base population and also that they were based in cities that had a really strong medical system so that if someone got sick and needed care they were going to get an adequate degree of medical assistance. Well that's good to know. Um, so there has been some thought given to protecting yes. the, the rest of the population. That's good. Is there any talk of a, of a vaccine, vaccine or any kind of antiviral that can kind of prevent the spread of this? Can you 
I know scientists are actively working on those things. I'm not aware of anything to date that is being actively used as an antiviral. Um, I have heard that there are some drugs that might have been identified for other viruses that they're trying. Um, right now, I think our best, um, our best thing to do for patients with coronavirus is good supportive care. So make sure that they're in a hospital where they can get that care, make sure they have oxygen if they need it, that they have fluids, and, and monitoring them um, for, for how their condition's progressing. So you mentioned the hospital. Is there one specific hospital in our community that's been designated as a hospital for this, or is it spread out amongst hospitals? How does that work? And I have to ask, what hospital is it? Of course. Uh, CDC is not going to be rele releasing the name of the hospital. I'm sure you can understand that for patient privacy, Absolutely. that's important. Um, what is important to know is that these hospitals are prepared. Um, there's not just been one hospital designated. There, there could be, if there are more patients, that could be at more than one hospital. Um, but hospitals across San Antonio are preparing for the possibility of coronavirus because there could be the potential for passengers coming from other places with it, not just the evacuees. And so it's important for everybody to be ready. But right now, there is no active virus circulating in the community. So asking a little bit more about the hospital, um, I, I understand that people are at most risk for death if they have underlying health issues. And the hospitals are usually filled with people with underlying health issues. So um, a little bit more in detail about how the quarantine within the hospital works okay. that would be helpful. I think that's a great point. And um, um, the types of rooms that we're recommending a person with coronavirus be kept in in a hospital is what is known as a negative air pressure room. And this is a type of room where the air flows only into the room and not out of the room. And that keeps any viruses or germs that might be spread by the person in there within the room. And anybody who goes into the room wears the type of personal protective equipment or PPE that will protect them from exposure to the virus. So they would wear a special mask, which we call a respirator. They would wear eye protection to make sure that no droplets can get in their eyes, gloves, and a gown. So I have to ask this as a follow to that. How is this uh, disease contracted? How is it spread? Do we have any information about that? Well, this is a new and emerging virus, and we're still learning about it, but we do know how other coronaviruses that are related to it are spread. And for the most part, it is spread by small droplets. So when somebody coughs or sneezes, those droplets can maybe spread a few feet in the air to a person standing next to them. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we do during quarantine is we just say, everybody make sure you have at least six feet in between people, and, and that is beyond the distance that those small droplets could spread. Excellent. And I understand that some evacuees have been released released in Riverside, California, and that there was yes. a positive case there that was released uh, accidentally. Is that true? And um, what will that happen here? So they weren't released. Mm -hmm. um, so my understanding is that at one of the air bases that received passengers, not on our flight, but a different flight, there were, um, there were three individuals that were being investigated because they were ill. And those individuals uh, were told they had a negative test result and they were on their way back to quarantine and then they found out that one of them was positive. So they were not released to the general public. They were isolated in their rooms on that base. But I know people may have questions about that and I can assure them that for what happened in San Antonio here, we, we made sure that we knew those test results and that patient was not going to be released until we knew for sure what it was. So I understand that in situations like this, that panic kind of takes hold and mm -hmm. people get really worried. Um, are you concerned that the panic will be more dangerous than the virus itself? You know, I'm a disease detective and I've worked in this field for over 20 years and in my experience, the, the public worry is always worse than the disease. And so, you know, you have to continually educate, you have to feed information to the community, you have to answer their questions because they're legitimate questions. Um, but at the end of the day, we base our recommendations on what we know about the science and that's what I keep coming back to. We know how other coronaviruses behave. While we're learning more about this virus, we're basing our recommendations recommendations on, on what we know for the others. Dr. Jennifer McQuiston, CDC, thank you for your work in our community and uh, let's keep us safe here in San Antonio. Thank you so much for having me.